In our epistle this morning, we learned that through implication that angels can appear as people. It means that we might meet angels face to face at any time and have no idea that we are face to face with an angel. This shows us that God is actively at work in the world. Sending angels, sending angels does not appear to be an extremely abnormal occurrence, but something that we might expect to encounter one day. And God, my brothers and sisters, is not just sitting on his throne watching. When he wants to make sure something is done, he makes it happen, sometimes by sending his messengers. The scripture encourages us to show hospitality to strangers. And normally we think of showing hospitality to people we know. But here it tells us to do it for people we do not know. Basically, we are like the Good Samaritan who helped those that was in need. And this could include giving a seat to someone who needs it or helping someone short of change at the grocery store or helping an elderly lady carry her suitcase or perhaps opening your home to a foreign exchange student. There is always room for one more in the church, in the Lord's kingdom, and even in here at the cathedral. Now that might mean you have to slide over and sit a little closer to the person next to you, but that's okay. The Lord Church never hangs up a no vacancy sign. And it's good that we invite people to church, invite our friends and neighbors, but also people that we do not know. With so much civil unrest going on today, some may wonder if hospitality have drifted away. But God cares about everything that you experience, from a sore throat to the concerns about the world's economy. And even when you tell God about the inconvenience that might arise, God take note of that too. But as Christians, we know the only place in the world that we can come and escape and hear the good news of Jesus Christ is when we come to church. If ever a place to receive hospitality is in the church. And the gift of hospitality, it blesses both the one who gives and the one who receives. For in doing so, some may entertain an angel without knowing. But this alludes to the story of Abraham and Sarah who provided hospitality to three strangers who turned out to be messengers from God, bearing the message that Sarah would have a son in her old age. By showing kindness to strangers, you could be showing kindness to a messenger of God. Maybe buying an extra burger to share with a homeless person or helping someone change a flat tire on their car or offering a ride to your colleague who needs one. And God often gives us opportunities to show hospitality and compassion for someone who needs it. And if anyone deserved charity, celebrity treatment, it was Jesus. Yet that is not what happened. Instead, Jesus came to show us what true greatness really looks like and what true greatness does. Jesus' ministry on earth was a ministry of humble service. And there was nothing pretentious about Jesus. The Lord didn't expect special treatment or chase after fame and fortune. In fact, on one or more occasions, Jesus told others to remain quiet about what they had seen Jesus do. And all too often, our lives become consumed by our own plans. Our schedules may be filled with many other important things to do. And we often, on our own, our plans and often while we focus, I'm sorry, focusing on our plans, we miss out on the opportunities that God gives us to make room to others in our lives. 
What we learn from Jesus by example is the importance of putting the needs of others ahead of our own. Our life is not about the pursuit of comfort or recognition, quite the contrary. In pursuing God's purposes, our life is second. And this is one characteristic about Jesus that we can and should imitate. We are never more like Jesus Christ than when we are helping someone else. It shows hospitality. Thank you, God. If we were meant to have parties and impress out other people, uh, showing hospitality, many of us would not bother. Two years ago this month, I lost my husband. At first, it was hard to deal with. And grieving is an individual experience. There is no right or wrong way to grieve. And how you grieve depends on many factors, including your personality, your coping style, your life experience, your faith, and how significant the loss was to you. And grief is a natural response to loss. It's the emotional suffering you feel when someone or something you love is taken away. And often the pain can, can feel overwhelming. And you may experience all kinds of difficult and unexpected emotions, from shock or anger to disbelief and profound sadness. And the pain of grief can, be, can also disrupt your physical health, making it difficult to sleep and to eat, making it difficult even to think straight. And these, my friends, they're normal reactions to loss. And the more significant the loss, the more intense your grief will be. But God surrounded me with an awesome support system here at the cathedral. I can't thank Rob enough for being a pastor to me and a shoulder to lean on when I needed it the most. And I'm grateful for serving with a team of vergers that always provided a warm and cheerful environment, so much that it took my mind off of my needs. And members of the altar guild unknowingly provided hospitality through their encouraging words and smiles. And many others, even in the choir, would show acts of kindness. And all of these are acts that meant hospitality to me. And I'm truly grateful to have been here during a vulnerable time of my life. And what I recognized was now as faith, it was not something that I had control over or do on my own, but it was God's gift to me and to others to keep us going, to keep us sitting at the table, to keep us loving our neighbors as Christ has intends for us to do. And often I will hear a faint whisper of encouragement and during those times, I realized God was saying, it matters to me when you show up. During my lifetime, I learned more through failure than I did through success. In other words, you learn more in the difficult times than you do in the good times. And I learned the true meaning of hospitality here at the cathedral. And I just want to take the time out now to say thank you for your hospitality. More than making room, hospitality calls for Christians to be ready even for the unexpected, 
And while our deeds of compassion and mercy are not the means by which we enter God's kingdom, they do show that we are all a part of God's family. Amen.